If you work with data in Excel and you aren't using Power Pivot, then I guarantee you are wasting time. I certainly know I was. So what I want to do today is give you all of the basics you need to know about Power Pivot in just 13 minutes. This will absolutely change your work life. Hey everyone, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mike. I am a senior finance leader, and over the last decade, I've worked in finance everywhere from the Fortune 100 to brand new startups. There were a lot of things that I wish I knew earlier in my career, and one of those is the Power Suite. That's Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power BI. Now that I finally learned those in the last few months after putting it off for years, the amount of time I've saved and the way it has transformed my workday and my workflow has just been absolutely unbelievable. And I want to give you those same tools without putting it off any longer like I did. If you're new here, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and leave a comment with any finance content you'd like to learn in the future. I'm making new videos every single week and I want to make sure it's what you're looking for. Let's learn Power Pivot in 13 minutes. So what is Power Pivot? Well, it is a powerful data tool built right into Excel. That's right, you don't need to spend any money or get fancy add-ons, it's right there, ready for you. It helps manage and analyze large amounts of data that traditional pivot tables can't handle. It allows you to create complex data models where you can link different data sets together. It'll automate calculations and data processing before it ever gets into your workbook. Can you say goodbye nested if functions? Bye-bye. It'll save you time by streamlining repetitive tasks. It can connect to multiple data sources for better insights, and it enhances Excel with advanced analytical capabilities that you couldn't do normally. There's a couple terms you need to know before using Power Pivot. These are things that are used repeatedly in the software that you're probably not familiar with. The first is a data model. This is a collection of multiple tables and how they're related together, which is the way Power Pivot works. And don't worry, we'll go through all of this live. There's DAX, which stands for Data Analysis Expressions. This is a different formula language than Excel that's used in Power Pivot to create these complex calculations within your tables. There's calculated columns. These are columns you add to your data model and then use DAX formulas to calculate these values. Measures are the calculations created using DAX. These can summarize data, totals, averages, and they're used in your pivot tables. And then there's relationships. These are connections between different tables in a data model, and they allow you to combine the data by looking for similarities between the data sets. All right, that is quite enough time in PowerPoint. Let's get started in Excel. So I've got three data sets that we're going to use today. Our goal is to calculate the revenue for different categories for a coffee shop. But the problem is the data is living in different places. So here we have the number of transactions or times different products were sold, when they were sold, all that great stuff. So we have the transactions, but we don't have the prices. The prices are sitting in this other one called price. So we have all of our prices over here. And then if we go to our mapping table, this is gonna tell us the categories and the time of day, which is how management likes to track this. And again, they're sitting in three different places. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take our data and add it to a data model, okay? So now that I've shown you these, I'm gonna close the workbook and we're gonna open up a new one and pull this data in. We're gonna pull this data in using Power Query. If you haven't had a chance to learn Power Query, you'll see the basics here, but go ahead and watch a video that I'll link right here that goes in depth in Power Query in just a few minutes. All right, so we've got our brand new Excel workbook and we're gonna go ahead and pull the data in. You can find Power Query right here and this is where we're gonna pull the data in. All three files I showed you are Excel. Now we can pull all kinds of things in, but we're gonna use Excel in this case. And we're gonna pull in our three files. All right, so here's our coffee shop sales. We'll go ahead and import that. I want to pull in my transaction table. And I'm going to load to, and I want to click load to because I want to make sure I add this to the data model. And I only need a connection. The data model is what Power Pivot will work on. Power Query can pull it into your workbook, it can pull it a lot of different places. I want to pull it into the data model so that we can work with it in Power, Power Pivot. All right, so that's our transactions. Now we're gonna go get our product pricing. And if you wanna transform the data, and again, there's a great video on this. If you wanna transform the data, you would do that in Power Query. You can do that before you get in, but we're just gonna work in Power Pivot because this is all about speed.
All right, and then last, we're going to pull in our mapping table. Here we want to select multiple options. We want to have both of these available. So now that we've got our data in, we're going to go and open up Power Pivot. All right, so here's our Power Pivot table here, and there's not a ton of options and because it is super easy to use. So first of all, you can click Manage. This is going to open up the data model. We'll do that in a second. Here's where you can create measures and KPIs. Again, these are the calculations that you're going to be able to pull out. Same with KPIs. If you have any tables in here, you can just add them straight into the data model. And then you can also detect relationships and sometimes Power Pivot will find them themselves. But we're going to go ahead and click the data model button and open this up. So now we've got our Power Pivot window opened up. You'll see that all of our data is pulled in here. So here's all the tables that I showed you earlier. They're available right on the bottom. On the home table, you can get additional data if you want to. You can generate a pivot table straight from here. And if you go to the design, this is where you can do most of what we'll do today with calculations and relationships. There are a few things on the advanced tab, but again, that's outside the scope of this video. That'll be in an advanced video later on. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create relationships between the tables. Now there's two ways to do that. There's the slightly more complex way with more detail, but there's also a fast way that I'm going to show you. So you can click the create relationship button here and do it by linking up the tables, but there's a faster, better way that I like to do it. And that's by coming to view and clicking this diagram view button right here. The diagram view is going to open up our tables. Okay. We see them all here, and this is going to let us link them up right here. So I'm going to open this up a little bit. So now all we have to do is drag the matching attribute from one to the other where they match. So we're going to take product ID and connect it to product ID. All right, and you see the link has been created. So we're going to go ahead and link column one, which we know is our product category, even though it's not labeled, over to product category. You see the relationship's been created there. All right, and then lastly, we just want to take time of day, or hour rather, and we're going to connect hour to hour. And now all of our relationships are set up. If you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate if you would take a second and hit that like button. It really helps me out as I try to create better content. And also, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. I post a brand new video every single Monday, and I don't want to make you miss a single one of our unfiltered finance videos. So now I'm going to go ahead and insert a pivot table. The trick is you want to make sure that you insert it from the data model. So where you would normally just hit the button or select table range, you want to make sure that you click from data model. We're going to put this on the existing worksheet. And now you use it just like a regular pivot table, except in the background, all of this extra data is being accumulated and calculated for you. So now that we've got our pivot table inserted, you'll see that all the four columns are here. Now, this may look just like a regular pivot table, but the really cool thing is you can pull data in from any of the related tables. And if you've created a relationship, it's going to automatically connect that and let you pull in values from anywhere. But what we're still missing is revenue because we've got our prices in one place and our transaction quantity in another. So this is where we're going to use a DAX formula to bring that all together in one place without having to do any calculations straight from Excel workbook. This is when you can say goodbye to things like VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, some ifs, all that stuff you can do right in Power Pivot. So to create a DAX formula, we're going to go up to measures and we're going to hit new measure. Now there's a lot of different formulas available in here. You'll see a whole list. I'm going to have some resources on the blog. I'll put that down in the comment. Make sure to go check that out. But you can also just go through these and kind of see what each one does. In this case, we're going to use a function called sum x. It's sum x because it's reiterative, and that means that it's going to go through and do this calculation at every single row in the table, not just sum the entire total. Just like in Excel, it tells us what it needs. The first thing it needs is the table. We want to do this calculation in the transactions table. Then we need to put an expression, and this is where we're going to multiply our quantity times our price. So for the first one, the quantity is right here. And then we're going to multiply that by our price. But how do we pull that in? Because price isn't in this table. Well, we use a function called related, and it's going to say for each of these product IDs where we have a quantity, pull in the price. So we're going to call related, and this is an easy formula. It's just the column you want to pull from. And we've already linked these two up with product ID. So we'll go ahead and close that. We'll hit enter. And there's our revenue just like that. And now we can go ahead. We're going to pull in our time of day. 
want to make sure we don't have any filters on here so we can see everything. So we've got our time of day pulled in. We're going to go ahead and pull in our product category. And there you go. So measure one again is our revenue right here. And it's all being calculated by multiplying the quantity times the price at every single level. There's just so many different ways you can use Power Pivot, including, I mean, you can do multi-step calculations. The possibilities are endless all with this framework that I've showed you. Don't forget that just like with regular pivot tables, you can use this any way you want. You can add in slicers for filtering. You can go in here and you know insert pivot charts. The really cool thing about this is that as you make any changes to the data model, all of that's gonna become available right in your charts, right in your data set, and it's all gonna update automatically. How cool is that? The biggest thing that I want you to take away from this video is that Power Pivot gives you the ability to do a lot of the calculations, things like, V lookup, X lookup, index match, sum ifs, all of those things that you've been doing by connecting tables yourself manually, Power Pivot gives you the ability to do all of that automatically on the back end before you ever pull it in to relate tables to one another by that easy drag and drop that we showed, and then to build these really complex visualizations that just update themselves automatically, and this will save you so much time. If you've enjoyed this video and if it's been helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like this video. Also, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. I read and respond to every single one, and I am more than happy to help. Until next time, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.